All right, guys, welcome into my official NBA Arena rankings for 2023. Yes, these are from 29 to 1 because there are right now only 29 arenas with the Clippers and Lakers still sharing the same facility. We're going to kick it off at 29, and I'm just going to kind of rapid fire through these. I also did the MLB and the NFL, uh, but when it comes to NBA arenas, a lot of them are the same, so I'm just going to roll through these, starting with the worst arena here in 2023, in my opinion. It is Smoothie King Arena, home of the New Orleans Pelicans, the exterior of it. It looks like a Chuck E. Cheese from the 1970s. The interior, not much better. Very, very bland. It's one of the, the oldest or, or at least older arenas in the NBA. It doesn't get rave reviews. Kind of a weird fact. I believe it hosted like two All-Star games in the span of four years, like 2014 and 2017 or something like that. But yeah, this one, especially the exterior, it's just terrible. It has an old glass design. It looks like it was made in 1982, but it is the worst arena of 2023. At number 28, it's going to be the Target Center. So the Target Center actually had a major facelift. The exterior of it got renovated. They kind of turned it into this futuristic target looking thing. It does not look like an NBA arena from the exterior. They also decided to put some type of grass on the roof, which I think is dumb. And then the interior of the target center, by far the worst in the NBA. This thing was built in 1990. It looks like it hasn't seen a single interior renovation. It's got a you know bigger upper deck, bigger lower bowl, kind of old design, and it comes in at number 28. At number 27, it is Wells Fargo Center. Now, this is another one that recently got renovated, but... To me, this NBA arena is just very bland. Philadelphia is trying to plan a new arena, possibly in 2031 or sooner. But this one, I just don't see a positive thing about it. The exterior is very average. The interior, nothing to write home about either. At number 26, it is Vivent Arena. Uh, but look at the exterior of it. It looks like an abandoned dump. Looks like one of those old office maxes, like abandoned type thing. Uh, it definitely needs a stadium upgrade there. At 25, it is Capital One Arena home of the Washington Wizards. So this is another one that recently did receive a seating renovation. They got brand new seats, but this one is almost identical to the Wells Fargo Center, especially the interior of them. You've got, you know, the, the middle tier, the three deck approach, a smaller upper deck. I guess that's decent, but I've always thought this one was just terrible. I believe they're also the home to the Georgetown uh, college basketball team as well. At number 24, it is the Moda Center, home of the Portland Trailblazers. The exterior, it looks like it's trying to be futuristic, but it was built in 1995 or something. Uh, it's got that concrete design that you would just never see today. I guess the lighting is interesting. The interior of it, there's just nothing special about it. It does, wow, that is a, I didn't realize how many rows the lower bowl went back right there. That, that might be the biggest lower bowl in the NBA at the Moda Center for the Trailblazers but it leaves a lot to be desired. At number 23, it is the FedEx Forum. This one might be receiving a renovation soon. We'll have to see. Uh, overall, just very bland. I mean, most of these are really similar. I guess you could say the exterior of it. I mean, it's pretty crappy, but it's not the worst. I've got it sitting right now at number 23. At number 22, it is Ball Arena, home of the Denver Nuggets. It's pretty old, and the main thing with Denver is the altitude. I know people complain about that, but I mean, I just there's nothing I can say about this. You know, it's just an average arena that has a, a lower bowl. It, it does have a little bit of a club section, and then an, an upper deck area that I think is just you know the the way it's situated with kind of a tier level thing. It, it's just really bad. So it comes in at 22. At number 21, it is the Spectrum Center home of the Charlotte Hornets. So this one has a very big upper bowl, upper deck area. Looks like it has goes about 20 or 25 rows back towards the top. Uh, that is a no-no. That is a horrible design. And uh, this one is, you know, not terrible. I will say it does have a good exterior. It's a, it's a pretty nice compared to the other ones we've seen, but it's going to come in at 21. At number 20, it is State Farm Arena, home of the Atlanta Hawks. So this one, 
beautiful, amazing interior. I have no clue what they were thinking with that lazy, like, Atlanta signage on the exterior of it. I think it looks so bad. But I do like the interior, unique look of the upper deck to where it's like cut up sections. I think that's a really cool design. So Atlanta, the interior of it is possibly like a top 10 look. But just the exterior with that Atlanta design, you can barely even make out that's what it's saying. They should have just gotten rid of it and allowed for like an all glass look on the exterior. That would have been way better uh, in my opinion, but it comes in at number 20. At number 19, it's Footprint Center. So this one is another one I believe it recently got a renovation. It is the uh, smallest costing NBA arena by far. I believe it only costs $200 million. And now we're getting into kind of the average ones. I really have nothing against this. I know a lot of people think the Footprint Center is pretty bad. I don't mind it, but uh, I used to like the Suns' like color scheme back in when they had Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire. Now it seems like it's kind of, I don't know, I just like the more purple type color scheme, and it seems like they kind of went away from that. Uh, but either way, that comes in at number 19. At number 18, it is the United Center. So the United Center, home of the Chicago Bulls, I, I mean, it looks like a concrete steel chamber. It's just very average. There's nothing good I can say about it. Uh, I'm not going to say anything bad about it, but it's it's very bland, very boring, your typical NBA arena. I honestly probably should have put this one a lot lower. I'm not even going to lie. I do not like the look of that exterior, uh, but it is going to come in at number 18. At number 17, it is the Toyota Center. So this one, I do think it has a nice uh, interior. The exterior is just so dated, and I hate that oval egg type shape. It, it's just such a bad design, but the interior I do like the split upper deck, the way it looks. Gives it a unique feel to it. And you also have the bright red seats, which also gives it uh, uniqueness. And, and kind of, you know when you're playing a game in Houston because of the seating. I think that's a cool aspect of it. So it comes in at 17. At 16, it is Paycom Center, which used to be, I think, Chesapeake Bank Arena, home of Oklahoma City. So this one is pretty bland, but it does do a really good job with noise and stuff when Oklahoma City was really good and they were in the playoffs consistently. Also, it has a relatively small upper deck, which is kind of a better design. It's got a bigger lower bowl as well. This one is very simple, but I do like it overall. And then they also did recently kind of redesign the exterior lighting, and it looks pretty good when it's lit up, but this is going to need some type of renovation, or they're saying maybe they'll get a new stadium in Oklahoma City in the future. At number 15, it is the Barclays Center, so this is the one that's really polarizing. It cost over a billion dollars. It's got a really odd, like, futuristic type exterior. I do kind of like the look of it. The interior is really dark. I understand they're going with the Brooklyn Nets color of like all black, but I just think they made it too dark. And it's actually like hard to even see when games are going on. And it's not like, you know, the Lakers or anything where they dim the lights. It's just weird. It's just really dark. Uh, but overall, the seating design, it is unique. It's kind of just like a mass of seats with like cut off sections. I don't know. I mean, I don't mind it. I know a lot of people hate it, but I've got it right in the middle at number 15. At number 14, it's the AT&T Center. So this one has a unique lower bowl design. It has like little box seats in the lower bowl that really, I don't think any other NBA stadium has. I don't think really any other NBA arena has, but it has them. And then also kind of the upper tier seating design where, you know, this the rows jet up like in a V-shape. I, I think that's a cool design. So I really have nothing against AT&T. Uh, you know, the AT&T Center, they used to play a lot of playoff games here with San Antonio, with Tim Duncan, Tony Parker, uh, Ginobili, and Popovich. They had that dynasty. So I, I think it does its job. It comes in at number 14. At number 13, it is the Gainbridge Fieldhouse, the Indiana Pacers home. So this is one of the only NBA arenas that does have a window because it is a field house. It lets in natural light. Uh, that aspect of it is amazing. I know it just recently had a renovation. There was great construction photos and things like that. But I just think like the seating is so bad on the interior. To me, this could possibly be a top five arena just because the design of it is so unique to what we're used to seeing in the NBA. But like, I just don't like the wall of seating from it. 
So it comes in at number 13. It is a really cool idea with the window though. And I do think we will see more natural light type designs when it comes to future NBA arenas. At number 12, it is the Miami-Dade Arena or whatever it's called now. It used to be the F FTX, uh, but we obviously know with that scam, it's not that anymore. I really like the exterior of it. It really fits Miami well. Kind of looks like a futuristic type, all white design, silver on top. Pretty cool. And then the interior of it, Miami, you know, very unique aspect to it where they've got kind of those two retro scoreboards. Uh, they've also got kind of an interesting color scheme design. Some people like that. Some people don't. Does it fit the NBA? I mean, I don't mind it personally, and then also they have kind of like different compartments in terms of seating with kind of like a split upper deck, a split section, so I really like the look of Miami's arena, and it comes in at number 12. At number 10, it is the Amway Center, so this is a pretty recent stadium for the Orlando Magic. Believe it opened in 2010. Really nice exterior, really impressive middle tier seating that you really normally don't see when it comes to NBA uh, but this one, just being more modern, it's gotten great reviews. Orlando, unfortunately, really hasn't been good, uh, at least like the past decade. So I'm going to put it at number 11 just because... Uh, overall, the design is very nice. At number 10, it is the TD Garden in Boston. So originally, I actually had this one a lot higher, but after looking at it, uh, they like changed the seating, and to me, they made it a lot worse when they changed the color on the seats. So while the TD Garden, I still think, is a, is a good arena... Boston Celtics, they're always in the playoffs. You know, it's it's solid. There's just nothing special about it. So I decided to put it at number 10. At number 9, it is the Little Caesars Arena, home of the Detroit Pistons. So this is another newer one. And this one has a really cool color-changing roof and really kind of futuristic modern seating. They've got that lower upper bowl. And then on top of that, they actually have suites, like two wings on each side of suites, which is really futuristic and a great look. And then they also do have a great jumbotron uh, in the center. The only problem with this is just they completely botched the exterior design on the top. It's like that oval egg design. It just looks so bad and it has that Little Caesars logo just draped on it. It is just so ugly. If they would have changed that, I probably, and made it like a futuristic type design, this probably would be like top five or top three for me because I love the interior, but the exterior is just crap. At number eight, it's going to be American Airlines Center. That's a beautiful brick kind of old type design on the exterior. I love that. Uh, the interior of it, this is the home of the Dallas Mavericks. You know, it leaves a little bit to be desired. I think it has like an industrial type look because it looks like there's concrete above the upper deck. I don't really like that aspect of it, but the exterior makes up for it for sure. So I've got it inside my top 10 at number eight. At number seven, this is the Toronto uh, Raptors home arena. We know Toronto, the Jurassic Park on the exterior, really nice vibe. Also, this stadium's gotten really good reviews for being extremely loud. Yeah, and they kind of have a cool setup in terms of their upper deck. Like it branches out and then there's uh, suite seating up there as well. So that is cool and it comes in for me at number seven. At number six, it is Crypto.com Arena. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, dude, I don't know. You know, I guess Staples didn't pay, but that is such like a sad thing that happened. I mean, the Staples Center, you know, becoming this, uh, that's crazy, man. You, you got to somehow keep it at Staples Center, you know, but either way, the, the name got changed and now, I mean, the name is terrible. I have nothing against cryptocurrency, but it's just a bad name. The interior of this, it's got tons of suites being LA, of course. It's got like three straight decks of them and then it's got a very small upper deck, like, like five rows for some of those, so... I like the interior of it, the aspect of it being in LA. The exterior circle is really cool, so it's going to come in at number six for me. I do think it looks way better when it is dimmed during Lakers games versus Clippers games. Of course, the Clippers are getting their own arena, the Intuit Dome, which probably will be a top five or a top four arena minimum when that thing opens in 2024. At number five, it is Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. They just got an amazing exterior futuristic renovation. Uh, that's the Cleveland Cavaliers. And then also I love the interior seating, kind of the dark uh, red seating, the wine and gold type coloring. 
going. It is pretty cool, and it fits the team and just fits the uh, stadium or and just fits the arena really well. Also, it gets really loud here, so it comes in at number five. At number four, it is going to be Madison Square Garden. So, you know, it's tough to rank Madison Square Garden being as old as it is. It is legendary. It's the most legendary stadium right now in the NBA by far, by far the oldest. You've got the ceiling design. You kind of have the interesting, you know, upper tier level with kind of the extra little club area. Uh, so I really like Madison Square Garden. It is, you know, a great, great arena. But I decided to put it at number four just because it is so old and there's brand new arenas that I do think kind of usurp it a little bit. At number three, it is the Golden One Center. This is the Sacramento Kings new arena, one of the most expensive arenas in the NBA. Really cool outer design, almost like a silver type thing, uh, futuristic design, and then the interior, kind of bland, but I like it. Also, you got the whole light the beam thing. You've got, you know, Sacramento being better, actually making the playoffs. Uh, also, a really bigger lower bowl, which is something that arenas are trying to do. At number two, it is the Chase Center. So this is the newest NBA arena. And for me, it goes at number two. It's got one of the best exteriors by far, home of the Golden State Warriors. Also, it kind of has that futuristic design look. Really unique, you know, in terms of the upper tier, upper bowl seating. Uh, and again, really nice futuristic look. Most expensive arena in the NBA right now. So it comes in at number two. And then number one, I am going with the Pfizer Forum for the best stadium in the NBA in 2023. The Milwaukee Bucks home stadium. I love the exterior lighting design to it. You've got kind of illuminate lights coming out from under the roof. That's really cool. Also, you have it completely lit up with kind of a glass outer area. And then on the interior, you know, it's a modern, normal design. But the good thing with this is it just doesn't look like it really has any horrible seating. Looks like all the seating is pretty close. They kind of toned it down on the upper bowl seating, which is something that I really like as well. And it just looks like there's no horrible seat at the Forum in Milwaukee. This is another, you know, pretty much brand new NBA arena. So it's not really surprising that I'm going with this at number one. Uh, but it is my current number one. I kind of combined the interior and the exterior aspect of it. Uh, and those are my official NBA arena rankings in 2023. So guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.